So I'm currently working as assistant professor of pharmaceutical sciences at Roseman University of Health Sciences and uh, I'm an adjunct assistant professor to the Department of Pharmaceutics, University of Utah. Both universities are in Salt Lake City, Utah. So migraine uh, in general is a very debilitating condition and uh, approximately 37 million people in the US have migraine and the cost of migraine attacks because of people not going to work is around 17 billion dollars. So uh, I came across these statistics and these numbers and I was pretty much uh, uh, you know, uh, surprised and one of my lab technicians she used to constantly uh, take off because of migraine attacks. So, and at the same time, when I was thinking about this, uh, International Academy of Compounding Pharmacists, so that's an organization, uh, they were soliciting grants for uh, compounding formulations in the area of pain in general. So they did not specify any particular pain. So I thought I would, you know, uh, submit this project for uh, funding from them. And so that's how. It's, uh, it's a kind of both uh, my personal experience and you know, a funding opportunity being opened up. So my project involves development of uh, preservative-free nasal spray of prochlorperazine, which is used for the treatment of migraine uh, pain, migraine attack, uh, headaches for migraine. So this project mainly involves a uh, vehicle which is preservative free and uh, it has a dose of prochlorperazine for uh, nasal delivery of my, uh, uh, prochlorperazine for the treatment of migraine. So the current uh, uh, medications which are non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like Keterolac and the triptans, which are 5-HT antagonists, uh, sumatriptan. So uh, the first thing is, in clinical trials done in ER rooms uh, uh, by doctors, what they did is they took these current medications and then compared with prochlorperazine. And they showed that uh, prochlorperazine has better efficacy in terms of the pain, uh, patient saying that their pain is going down. So. However, uh, we don't have any existing uh, uh, formulation of prochlorperazine which can be delivered nasally. So uh, we have tablets of prochlorperazine, we have injections which can be given intravenous and we have suppositories. So these are the only three formulations which are currently available and most of the times for migraine they either use intravenous injection or tablet. Actually, it's mostly intravenous injection. And the other suppositories, they are mainly used for uh, nausea if the patient is vomiting. So, uh, and then, uh, so I was looking at uh, how to formulate a nasal spray and uh, I found out that a lot of compounding pharmacies, they compound nasal sprays. But unfortunately, those sprays contain preservatives because the spray should be stable uh, so that there won't be any microbiological growth uh, for X number of days. And they're adding these preservatives. One example is benzalkonium chloride is a preservative which is commonly used. And this preservative uh, has been shown in humans that it's causing mucosal hypersensitivity and mucosal injury. So I was thinking uh, uh, to find something which can avoid that. And then uh, I found this uh, buffer-based vehicle, which doesn't have any preservatives. It's basically uh, the pH is lower so that microorganisms cannot grow at that pH. So uh, I thought I can use that vehicle and then add prochlorperazine so that I can have a nasal spray which has no preservatives and uh, which has a drug which is proved to be superior when you compare with existing drugs. So that's kind of I mixed those concepts together and I wasn't sure whether this vehicle will be 
at that pH prochlorpyrazine will be stable because when you formulate pH is very important factor which governs drugs stability. So then I did uh, stability studies by using different degradation products to make sure my uh, prochlorpyrazine is not degraded and found that this is chemically stable for 120 days at room temperature and uh, uh, microbiologically stable for 60 days. So, so in my first phase I developed the formulation and checked its chemical stability using certain uh, uh, degradation products which may form if this compound degrades. And then I did microbiological stability because for all nasal sprays you have to make sure the nasal spray doesn't have any uh, bacteria or pyrogens in it because you're uh, putting the drug directly into your mucosa. So that's so I did stability studies. So the, for the next project I want to do the efficacy studies in uh, animal models and I want to do pharmacokinetic studies where I want to measure the amount of prochlorpyrazine which has been absorbed into blood after uh, being delivered by this uh, nasal spray device. So American Association of Pharmaceutical Scientists is uh, one of the world's premier uh, professional organization for people who are involved in pharmaceutical research, specifically who are in the field of formulation and drug delivery. So I was a member of AAPS uh, since probably 1998 and 1999 and uh, uh, right from my days of pharmacy school I was involved with AAPS and uh, uh, I thought this is the platform where I can showcase my research and gather more collaborations and uh, probably get more critique from uh, peer researchers and uh, get more ideas on how I can take this research forward or whether this will work in the future or what kind of uh, drawbacks or bottlenecks I might have to face in my research. So that was the main purpose.